Great. So um, welcome, everyone. And a very good afternoon to you all. And thank you so much for attending our webinar today. Um, as you all know, uh, today we are going to be talking about the importance of beach cleaning. And our webinar is sponsored by Fiorentini Middle East. Uh, to talk about beaches, uh, they are one of the most important entities in any part of the world. Uh, Dubai, the UAE itself, uh, most of the Gulf region has beaches, and we're all very proud of it. Uh, they play a very, very crucial role in the maintenance of the ecosystem, but they're also an extremely important recreational spot for people. And as always, where there are people, there is waste. So um, in fact, through our research, what we found is that annually 7 billion tons of debris are deposited on beaches. And according to the Ocean Conservancy's Tides database, almost 60% of the beach litter worldwide is plastic. And overall, beach pollution affects the economy and definitely does not appeal to tourists. So today's discussion is going to touch upon various aspects of beach cleaning. And to discuss this, we have with us three experts. So before we start the discussion, I'm just going to introduce you to them, rather introduce them to you before we start the discussion. So we have with us first Mr. Alberto Negri. He is the general manager of Fiorentini Middle East. The company was established in the UAE in 2014 and is the official importer and distributor of CFC beach cleaning machines in the region. We also have with us Mr. Enol Hassan. He is the human resources manager at the Oberai Beach Resort Al Zora in Ajman. He comes with over 12 years of experience in the field and through the years has been a certified coach and mentor. He's a professional trainer and the green champion for the hotel. And finally with us is Mr. Renjit Chandran. He is the cluster general manager for Danath Jebel Dhana Resort and the Afra Beach, Beach Hotel. He's a hospitality professional with 19 years of experience in the UAE, Oman and Saudi Arabia. Renjit has worked with reputed international brands such as Deutsche Hospitality, Accor Hotels, Radisson Hotel Group, Emirates Palace Kempinski, and one and only Royal Mirage. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being part of our webinar today. So Thank we're you. going to start. So we're going to start the discussion with uh, a very important question, uh, which I I would like all of you to answer one by one, uh, which is how important are beaches for any city? Okay, can I start? Please, please. First of all, Shanti, thank you very much for uh, giving the opportunity to be in this webinar, of course. And hi, all, uh, hi to all. It's my pleasure that uh, you are here from this webinar, especially to Mr. Heinold and Mr. Aranji. Uh, about your question, in my opinion, as per my opinion, the beach plays an important role in day-to-day -day life, especially for the country like uh, Dubai, for example, where the tourism is a part and parcel. The beach provides many recreational opportunities, as we all know, like uh, boating, uh, fishing, swimming, and may think uh, uh, it will be a connecting factor with nature for all modern cities where artificiality has taken over. This is my, my opinion because the um, beach are very, very important. Okay. Uh, Mr. Renjit, would you like to add to this? Yes, indeed. It's extremely important in the aspect of tourism. When you take the world's top 10 destinations in the, related to tourism, and uh, six out of them would going to be beachfront. Uh, consider real estate. It's beachfront land has got the value. Beachfront properties has got the value. And uh, it's it's all about life. When we, be, when we speak about beach, we speak about life. We think about vacation. The first thing comes into most of the people's mind is the beach. So it's always related to our life. Correct, absolutely. Mr. Ainul, what is your opinion on how important uh, they are for any city? Thank you um, for allowing me again the opportunity to be a part of the webinar. You know, um, I have a very important point um, uh, about the beaches. It's not only about going for the recreational activities. Beaches actually represent a protection for residents living near the ocean. You know, it acts as a buffer against the high winds and waves of powerful storms or rough seas. So in terms of the environmental factor, it is it is a very important and a crucial part. You know, a lot of beaches, you will have natural resources uh, which are 
protected by all the governments now. An example would be mangroves in most part of the world. You know, it, 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 is, it, is, it is one of yeah. the most important and key, key aspect of us. Okay, great. So then tell us about beach pollution. Um, what are your, what have been uh, your personal experiences with it? And what is your opinion on its scale and the impact across the world? You know, unfortunately, over 80%, um, I was going through some data and doing a little bit of a research of my own. 80% uh, mm -hmm. of marine pollution comes from land-based activities. And when you see 80%, it's quite a high number. And it continues impacting the world. Uh, that is why you will see different international agencies are facing this issue and making the companies to join their initiative, uh, especially those zones where the tourism and resorts are increasing day in and day out. So that, if you see, can be controlled and have a huge amount of impact if we want, because th there might be um, questions which says, okay, uh, some is not in our control, but when we take a number of 80%, which is the landfills on the land, I mean, it is definitely something that we can control. Correct. Uh, it, like I said, where there are people, there is going to be waste. So it's Absolutely. just about how we manage that uh, kind of waste and manage that kind of pollution uh, that can actually lead to a clean beach. Uh, Mr. Ranjit, what, do you, what are your thoughts on beach pollution in your experience? I agree with what I, I know said that and we have see that on our daily life because we have 800 meters uh, meters of beachfront in the in our hotel and uh, it is 10,000 of garbages have been dumped around and for our, for our hotel itself we remove about uh, 100 plus kilos every day this could be, be you know the natural debris are there in terms of seaweeds or whatever but when it's come to the waste generated by uh, various beach users in the other part of the Town or wherever it is all going to get dumped into one one shore or another, and it is it is it is it is getting polluted and it is affecting the marine life and it is it is a concern and we are we are we as a responsible organization we are working on to reduce the you know the, to the damage to what extent it is effective that is a question to be <laughs> that's a million dollar question. Yeah. Correct, correct, absolutely. I mean, um, like you, both of you very correctly said, you know, it's just about, um, by the end of it, it's not just the beach that we are responsible for, or you guys as, you know, hotels are responsible for. It is also the ocean, which is then directly impacted by the pollution on the beach. So it's like a very two-pronged kind of approach in terms of marine pollution and beach pollution. So the impact is much greater than we actually do anticipate. Um, Mr. Alberto, what, what are your thoughts on this? Um, I think that, uh, as we all know, there are different types of pollution and uh, the problem that uh, we humans are the reason for this. Uh, try to imagine, for example, during the pandemic situation, during the lockdown, uh, as you know, the air pollution, for example, came down during the lockdown. And also beach is suffering uh, with the wastage removal as well. As my past experience, for example, during training, when we are doing training and demo for our beach cleaning machine, we, identif we identified a lot of uh, the composite materials, such plastic, cigarette, and this is affecting the nature, the human, and most importantly, the sea creature. And uh, of course, this is uh, the main problem is the what the human are doing, in my opinion. But we can change, of course. Correct. And, I mean, uh, you, uh, one of your points was really very relevant. I mean, uh, ever since the pandemic started, while it was uh, probably, probably the worst thing to happen to the world economy and to us as human beings who are so social in nature, um, when you go to see the impact that it actually had on mother nature, um, it was phenomenal. I mean, the kind of photographs you would get to see or, you know, the very fact that pollution was at an all time low, uh, was something really that I don't think we've really experienced in a very, very long time. And it just goes to show that wherever we are, there is waste. Shanti, I can uh, give you my experience, my personal experience. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm living here in Dubai, in Dubai Marina, and uh, I can see Marina every day. You cannot imagine during the lockdown, uh, you can see every day the fish that are in the water. You can see the color of the water completely different. Now, wow. after 
we finish the lockdown, uh, the waters become again like dark, you know, like uh, mm -hmm. this is not, this is uh, the responsibility is uh, from us. Yeah. yeah, it's tough. It's very tough. So what it's kind true. of, um, sorry, uh, someone was saying something? No, no, please go ahead. Yeah. So um, what kind of uh, government uh, requirements exist for maintaining beaches um, when we specifically talk about the UAE? Uh, UAE in general uh, have a quite clear regulations enforced in terms of the marine life and the beach maintenance. Mm -hmm. Sustainability is the national priority. That's they are quite clear in that. They are very strict in that. There is there is a separate environmental protection agency itself is available who's taking care of the natural preserve. As I know, rightly mentioned before, of the mangroves, the beach. The, the water, the water pollution, the waste dump, and there is a zero zero tolerance in that. That's quite clear. And we okay. get this time to time and guidance and support in all aspects from the government agencies. Additionally, we have the tourism development bodies. The, uh, for Abu Dhabi, for example, Department of Culture and Tourism. Dubai is DTCM, tourism, and Abu Ajman is something else, and Sharjah some of the various government bodies in line with municipality as well. They monitoring that. And for example, in our place, they, the, the government bodies, time to time, like I believe on a quarterly basis, they come and they check the quality of the water, not just the wow. beach, the water itself, to understand what to what level it is polluted, it's clear to use or not. They are quite sensitive about it. And I'm 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 very happy to in work in this the direction. Uh, you know, in line with the government uh, authorities' guidelines, and that's that, that. That's a very efficient way in in terms of the reef protection, in terms of the coral protection, in terms of uh, the sea life protection. Correct. Quite clear. What are the do's and don'ts, and if we, as a, a hotel, which we follow that, and we make sure our team members follow it, the guests follow that, and I'm sure in 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 the coming coming years, in the coming months, the coming years, you can really see a big difference. I'm not sure about the, uh, you know, to what extent it is possible in uh, to to a cluster like uh, Marina or a JBR, but definitely where I work, it is possible. Correct, because you're you're not as uh, surrounded by population as say like uh, Dubai Marina or the J or JBR or even public beaches for that matter, right? Yes. Yes. Correct, uh, Mr. Ainul, any comments on yeah. this? I would just like to add that um, you know UAE government has been quite supportive and they follow the UN uh, guidelines, the SDG 17, uh, very religiously. Mm -hmm. And as Mr. Ranjit rightly said, there are government bodies as well as uh, social bodies working towards it. I mean, when you talk about the pillars of sustainability for the, the UAE government, they have the pillars are uh, they have to have a distinguished government, a green economy, a vibrant community. Uh, and they want to promote UAE in general as a best place to live. And when you talk about, you know, that's one of the pillars that they have to follow uh, particularly. And you can see a lot of initiatives and you can actually do a little bit of a research and you will find that um, not all, but most of the pollution also at the beach, major chunk is plastic bottles. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a quite a gray area for the hotels um, where we all work. And there, there are, a lot of companies and social organizations uh, in UAE itself, an example is a degrade company, which you know does the recycling of bottles and uh, and various key initiatives that they are taking. So as Mr. Ranjit rightly said, even in our area, which is a little aloof from the main city, not very far, but still uh, we do manage to, to take care of that part. So as he rightly said, you know, you, you always have that inspections happening on a regular basis, um, even for the uh, municipality who would actually take the water and test it. You know, if it is if it is good enough uh, for the tourist or if it is good enough for the beach water. Correct. Absolutely. So what kind of uh, when you're talking about uh, green initiatives and you are the green champion for your hotel, what kind of schedule do you guys maintain? What kind of awareness programs do you uh, maintain in your hotel for your guests and staff to understand the importance of a clean beach? Uh, when you when you talk about the awareness, actually, it has to start from the ground level. Um, when we talk about the ground level, our champions are our team members who are working day in, day out. It can be 
um, housekeeping, it can be the recreation team members, for them to understand the impact of it is very important. So what we do here in terms of awareness is, um, of course, you will have separate scheduled class sessions for them. But apart from that, uh, you know, we have places like cafeteria, recreation room, employee entrance in and out, which are high traffic areas. And that is where we try to have key posters in place. And again, we keep on changing it for them to be aware of what we have done. And when we start taking pride in what we do, uh, that is when you see the results happening. So, you know, we have started mandatorily voluntary beach cleaning uh, twice a month in which actually the guests also participate. Recently, we had a World Environment Day and that day we did uh, a beach, big beach cleanup activity along with our guests who are quite happy to be a part of it. For them, uh, we have a lot of families traveling in the resorts. For them to imbibe that culture in their children, they will mm -hmm. always come wake up at 6 o'clock and bring their children up to make them understand that how important it is and how relevant it is. Even a mm -hmm. small difference makes a big difference at the end of the day. So uh, th these are some of the initiatives which we do here. We have a tie up with a lot of companies. Um, we would not say particularly for the beach, but in general to uh, for the environmental impact. One is the EEG company. And then as I told you about the D grade company. So there is there are several companies that we work uh, with them in in terms of that and in case if we have also challenges with a little bit of marine pollution something which is beyond the control of a hotel organization but the authorities actually help you a lot they are very quick um, to fix it and i mean they, they do help you know sometimes there are oil spillage let's say from from a boat which overturned and it it happens you know and mm -hmm. if you're hotelier you would understand what what i am actually talking about and all of a sudden mm. you have a you have a clean beach and early in the morning you know you had some high tides and uh, it's it's not only uh, the proximity of a kilometer on the left or the right we are talking about it is more far 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 away from you'll have trash coming to your place you'll have coal tars coming to your place so you have to be very quick and adaptive uh, in order to get your beach cleaned early in the morning before the guests uh, actually go to the place because for us as hoteliers the reputation is also at stake you know once there is there is a news out in the market which says that you know or, or people start posting it on social media it becomes very difficult for us to regain that trust back so it's quite critical for us i mean and that is where all the part so it's very it's a very important key area for us okay yeah i mean social media it has become uh, such an important aspect of any hospitality in uh, you know any part of the hospitality industry like anybody could you know just go and click a picture and ruin your reputation within you know a matter of seconds so All it's right. quite a difficult uh, you know thing to manage uh, from your end as well uh, Mr. Alberto, you've been you've been visiting a lot of uh, your clients who uh, use your beach cleaning machines. Uh, any any idea of what kind of schedule that they follow in private beaches? What do you recommend to them uh, when it comes to the cleaning of the beach? As for my opinion, of course, uh, each customer can do what he wants, of course. Uh, but <laughs> normally, what we are suggesting uh, on the beginning, especially uh, maybe a deep cleaning, uh, deep cleaning that uh, can maybe take uh, one, two, three days, depend accordingly with the dimension of the beach. And after, uh, if you want uh, to maintain a good result, uh, maybe twice or thrice uh, a week, uh, a light cleaning, a normal cleaning. Or you can divide it also zone by zone the beach according with the dimension. But uh, there is not a specific rule for this. The important thing is, uh, in my opinion, the first time maybe to do a deep cleaning machine because uh, with uh, all, for example, with our equipment, uh, you can uh, you can use a different uh, mesh no, to clean the beach, to filter the, the beach, the sand, sorry. And uh, of course, uh, during the deep cleaning, you can do something different. Uh, and after you can maintain uh, just uh, twice or thrice uh, a week, uh, this uh, good result. But this is depend of uh, resort by resort or customer by customer. There is not a specific role. OK, but uh, when you're talking about deep cleaning, you're talking uh, you're talking about the machines going through the sand, sifting through the sand through various filters, right? That is what is deep cleaning. And then 
surface cleaning would probably be just the surface of the sand that is just yes, you yes. Know, swept once. When, when I'm speaking about deep cleaning, I'm not speaking only about the deep, like 15, 20 centimeter. As I told you before, uh, normally machine, uh, in the machine in the market has uh, more than one uh, mesh uh, filter that you can put uh, in, the, in the filtration part in the back. And according with the dimension of the mesh, of course, you can collect more, more, uh, uh, the, for example, from the small, small stone, uh, the small shell, to the big one no? and maybe one, of course when you are doing this deep cleaning maybe you need a little more time because the the speed of the cleaning need, need to be reduced but uh, you cannot do a deep cleaning every day of course because also it's not uh, required maybe once in a month and after you can maintain no? okay okay uh, mr Renji, tell us about uh, the schedule that you maintain uh, your hotels maintain uh, when it comes to beach cleaning and awareness for your staff and guests See, maintaining the beach for us or any other hotel is an expensive affair. Uh, uh, man, manpower and uh, maintaining it to the level of guest expect expectations is always been a challenge, no matter wherever it's, it's a resort or uh, whatever, it's a public beach or whatever. The thing is that Absolutely. the floor is uh, The floor moves, right? And that's mm -hmm. where the, most of the guests, they walk on barefoot. They don't... Uh, very few, if you take a percentage, 80% of the guests prefer to walk on a barefoot on the beach and 20% of the guests would wear the beach sandals or the specific footwear, which is, you know, suitable for the beach uh, surface. So their expectations are these beaches are, the sand is loose and the beaches are speak and span and uh, free of any debris or stones, etc., etc. It's our schedule is that we, yes, we do twice a day in the sense, not deep cleaning, daily maintenance, you know, the daily maintenance. It can be done either by using the machine or manually because this, the challenge in the beach cleaning is that any other surfaces, we say that it is thermal disinfection, chemical disinfection, sanitization, cleaning, and, you know, robotic or manual, but beach yeah. is manual in the sense either use the traditional method or use a various machine there is no you know quick fix solution on that and that need constant maintenance uh, then there's another thing to add here is that what happens in based on the geographical structure of your hotel during the high tide times the next day morning you wake up you don't find the beach anymore <laughs> <laughs> so then okay. you have to bring the sand treated sand from outside to set it Fix it and rake oh. it. Yeah, that's oh. that's, yeah, that's a huge that's, challenge. Yes, it is. It is. It is indeed, and uh, that is a huge challenge. And ma majority of the hotels they do in the resorts, they do that do that sometimes on a yearly basis, sometimes once in two years. Some hotels need it every six months. So this sand that you get is treated sand from outside. So you have outsourced people, you outsource contractors to get you that treated sand and laid across your beach? Yes, there are various companies available which is certified by the authorities to supply this beach. We cannot just go and pick up a random company. So there are various stages of approvals are needed and we need to pick uh, we need to pick up that correct company and they would uh, bring in and uh, set the beach for you. Wow, that's, so that's is, interesting. Yeah, it is, it is. It is kind of, it is expensive at the same time. It is needed as well as you want to remain as a beach resort and mm -hmm. you want the guests to come back, they, which we will have to do that. And depend, that's again, it depends to hotel to hotel uh, based on based on what, what how is your location is. Yes. Uh, and what you're offering uh, as your main attraction as well. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So um, what, what kind of debris do we find um, on beaches, you know, when it comes to the kind of waste, like I mentioned earlier, about 60% of the waste that is found on beaches is plastic. Um, is that something that you all have experienced um, in your various sectors as well? Yes, it, we get everything, almost everything. Whatever the debris you can think about, that's from the car tires to broken glass bottles to the beer cans to cigarette butts to anything you get. Either you and find it or you find it, you find find it in a manner that the waves bring uh, brings in. Mm -hmm. uh, main thing and uh, some sometimes so fishing nets kind of things some debris left over by the boats when they go for fishing or whatever but main 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 challenge are the plastic and the cans yeah. these are the and, 
and a majority of this comes from the water yes okay because and what kind shore, of sorry go ahead no please please go the shore is maintained on a daily basis by the hotel team or uh, and it has been looked after but what has been brought in by by the shore we uh, by the sea which is not in you our country mm. correct correct absolutely what about you mr ainul what kind of debris do you uh, does your hotel find at the beach very uh, very similar to what mr ranjit said also um uh, rarely i mean there would be sometimes where you would also see chemical pollution um it it can be you know oil industrial chemicals or or sewage for example for that matter pesticides herbicides i mean it, it's quite tricky to be honest but uh, majority yes is plastic cans um, and and those items which you get uh, from the sea but sometimes you get also chemical uh, pollution you know or what you call mm -hmm. technical mm -hmm. terms Sorry. so on a daily basis you know we try uh, to maintain it uh, we have no other choice we have to maintain it um, to its utmost level but as mr ranjit said that you know every day uh, is a different day you cannot predict what's actually going to happen tomorrow uh, so you will actually have the beach uh, boys the ones who clean it 6 in the morning to actually go and have a look at it and sometimes you will really be surprised to see uh, the things what we get from there anything yeah. unique that we may not have thought of um, not really maybe mr ranjit will correlate you know you will have um a, a lot of jellyfish sometimes who have been washed yes. away by the shore a lot a lot at times especially during the high tide um and uh, i mean there were a couple of uh situations in the last four years where uh, there were small boats which came without uh, no one actually attending it to the shore really? you know um yeah. so maybe, maybe it's 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 fishermen boats which you know gets lost if it's a sea mm. storm or something so i'm mm. i'm telling you you will actually be surprised to see what kind of things the sea brings in interesting so you were uh, you were talking about how uh, you know you have your boys actually cleaning the beach at 6 in the morning so what are the other aspects apart from say the sand that uh, they would be cleaning would you have your sun beds and your umbrellas and things like that also part of the cleaning regime at that very time that particular moment yes so uh, when we talk about the beach it actually covers everything uh, you'll normally have your food and beverage team members uh, because we have a beach bar would come in to have their areas uh, being cleaned you will have the housekeeping team members and when we talk about the frequency and the schedule um, we follow twice or thrice the beach cleaning machine also uh, more to clean more for the leveling um, in a week the, in a week yes mm -hmm. so it's minimum twice and maximum thrice uh, keeping into consideration the off peak hours um when do we exactly not have to disturb the guests at, mm -hmm. at a particular point of time because we again have a beach bar and we also have a beach restaurant so okay. we try to avoid uh, the cleaning during the lunch times when they are probably having a meal so you have certain challenges but then we manage it pretty well Okay. What about you, Mr. Ranjit? Is there anything extra uh, beyond just the beach and the sand that you, your hotel cleans up every day? Yeah, what uh, see something is not on a daily basis. I just wanted to add to what to what Ainul said is that we have a unique uh, beach which have a lot of marine life activity. If you walk around, like the beach is shallow, you can walk up to two hundred, three hundred meters further ahead to the yeah. sea. You will be able to see the coral. You will be able to see the fish. and beach jellyfish is one thing some and you sometimes you will see the stingrays and what happens is that time to time we get beach turtles huge oh, wow. one mm -hmm. yeah, wow. 200 kilos <laughs> um, i i didn't know i did not weigh it myself but we did not have the tank to keep it but we have a the moment we get this beach turtles mo most of the time they are tired or some some are aged they just want to come to the beach and they wanted to you know die some of them mm -hmm. they are or by the propeller of a ship or uh, uh, something else so mm. that we the agency then they come they pick it up and go so one time we got a turtle we couldn't even uh, you know accommodate in the water where we did not have a tank so we have to go and buy a portable you know uh, pool to keep the guy inside so that heavy oh oh yeah, it is it is it was it was it was it was it was quite unique and yes when is come the oil spill 
I, that's something very impressive. Before we come to know, uh, authorities will come to know. We will, we will be, we will be waking up by the uh, oil control vote saying that okay, listen, you can't use your beach today. Your this is polluted. You can only start using it from 3 p.m. today. So. Uh. Okay. Is, and in, in that time, you, you cannot even clean the rest of the sand and stuff like that till they clear it up? Uh, no, they will let you uh, clean whatever in the shore, but they don't they don't want you to enter the beach, uh, enter the water. Okay, water. So, okay. That's, that's, okay. that's what it is. Okay. Uh, Mr. Alberto, uh, in your experience, what kind of waste have your clients uh, found at uh, their beaches? And um, what do you, what have you seen personally as well? Uh, I agree with the, my colleague that uh, what they told before, but of course I, I can tell you that uh, uh, sometimes uh, we found in some area, for example, in some beach, uh, artificial sand, for example, that arrive from the construction. And you, for this reason, apart the pollution caused by the human, no, like cigarette, plastic bag, uh, plastic bottle, we found also some uh, pieces of piece of glass piece of iron which can be very very dangerous due for these uh, uh, artificial sand that arrive from the construction i saw mm. a lot of time during maybe some demo and also we find sometimes also some coin some dirham <laughs> one, mm -hmm. one time one, one iphone that was not working <laughs> really okay yeah. Yes, yes, we found also one. Now, anyway, uh, apart this, uh, uh, we need to take care also about uh, when, uh, this is my suggestion, when maybe one resort want to add uh, or buy some sand, uh, to buy some sand that is certified, that because uh, otherwise the risk is to find some very, um, like, uh, as I told you, glass or iron, uh, piece of iron inside, it can be very dangerous. Correct, correct. How uh, how different is it, uh, you know, from a public beach? I mean, a lot that we've just spoken about is very heavy when it comes to private beaches. Uh, in your experience, uh, have you seen any kind of waste that is different in, say, a public beach? Maybe, you know, when you're talking about Dubai, then you're talking about Mamzara, you're talking about Jumeirah Beach, uh, Kite Beach, Sunset Beach, you know, you have so many. Uh, is there something different that is found? Uh, is there a different schedule that people follow? Mr. Alberto, if you could comment on this? Um, no, maybe maybe the thing is that uh, in the private beach, uh, or, or no, in, in the public beach, uh, of course, I know that especially in Jumeirah, uh, according by the government, they are cleaning uh, daily. But of course, uh, because it's a very huge beach, it's a very big beach, uh, they are not doing the same treatment that uh, maybe a private resort can uh, can do, no? Sorry. And maybe they are not doing a very deep cleaning, but deep cleaning uh, session. Maybe they are more focused in, uh, in the, I don't know, cleaning. In the aesthetic result, no? That the beach needs to be flat uh, like this. But um, uh, in, in my in my opinion. Uh, Mr. Alberto? Okay, I think his uh, video is stuck. Hello? Okay, I think he may have to leave and come back. Um, any opinion on this, on the public beaches versus private beaches? Mr. Ayanol or Mr. Renjit, any, any of you would like to present an opinion of what you all find maybe different? See the difference. There won't be much. The cleaning frequency has to be more. And the public mm -hmm. beaches, we have the privilege to clean constantly, even when the guest is there. With considering their, you know, convenience, the the beach cleaning machines can run. Mm -hmm. uh, there won't be, you know, that is a normal normal scene. And the yeah, food, yeah. so the garbage removal or the debris removal is gonna be high as well. But when it's come to the private beaches, yes. There is much more sensitive, and there, similar to any other areas, the cleanliness has to be felt, not to be seen. That's 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 what, that's how I differentiate. Correct, absolutely. Hi. Can you see me Very now? Well. Yes, we can see and uh, hear okay. you now. I don't know what's happened. No problem. You were saying something? Uh, no, maybe I don't know till when you. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. Um, I have a question actually uh, with regard to the management of the waste. 
um you know uh, this is a little away from what we've discussed earlier or did the points of discussion but how do you all manage the waste at your respective hotels or resorts that you find on the beach so you you know uh, mr ranjit actually you are the one who gave me this idea because you spoke about you know the turtle that landed at your uh, you know resort beach and you had to buy you know you had to get a different pool for it to be put in so when you're talking about things like jellyfish or you're talking about things like boats or nets um apart from the plastic and the cigarette and the bottles that you might find uh you know how do you how do you manage this waste that is more unique in nature see in when it comes to the marine life uh be it a dead uh, dead one or a live one is a quite quite clear law is enforced that we cannot dispose it we have to inform the authorities and they okay. come in i'm not talking about the uh, dead jell jellyfish but i'm talking about the turtles or anything else we have like to be law okay Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly it's a, it's a beach it can it could be a beach turtle or it could be a pool of fish which is all of a sudden you found that so we have to take the photo and inform on, on a specific number then they come they give us a clearance to discard and when it's come mm -hmm. to uh, seaweeds which is a naturally generated waste that we have mm -hmm. a process of recycling and using it for as a gardening fertilizer oh okay that's nice yeah that's uh, that's what we do and when it comes to the plastic and the cans and any other things we need to have the recycling process in place to be certified with uh, e, uh, to, to be to be to, to have the environmental you know compliance as well as for the from the food safety to the uh, to the to the tourism certificate so we that that goes into that recycling process completely it can be metal okay. goes to metal and the uh, glass goes to glass and plastic goes to plastic Okay, Mr. Anul, any comment? Sorry, sorry, sorry. As, uh, we have various contact with the waste management company. They provide us different bins, and uh, we we act accordingly. Okay, uh, Mr. Anul, any comments uh, on management the same, of waste? The same process. What Mr. Ranjit rightly uh, stated and very clear. Uh, mm -hmm. was it is just segregated into different uh, wastes industrial waste wet waste um, and then you have the third party contracting companies uh, who will be again providing the bins to you and they will take care of the segregation all these third company uh, third party companies are certified by the municipality um, to do certain uh, waste management practices so it's 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 very safe and secure here okay that's that's good and quite reassuring as well yeah. you know when it comes to that um moving on uh, we've spoken about the fact that you know you have various methods by which beaches are cleaned uh, one of them being mainly manual so you have your guys picking up the bigger debris and the you know the plastic or the bottles and stuff like that um but when we talk about the kind of technologies that are available um we're talking beach cleaning machines right so um Mr. Alberto, can you tell us a little about, in general, I'm not specifically talking about your brand as such, but more yes. about, in general, the kind of machines that are available for both public and private uh, entities to clean beaches? Yes, yes, OK. Uh, of course, uh, actually, um, there are two different kind of machines, especially. One is uh, the small one that normally is walk behind. And uh, the second model is uh, the ride on. But it's not only the difference is not only between work behind or I don't because there are also different type of system of cleaning. For example, some machine are using a collecting chain that is rotating. OK, and some other machine are using a vibrating screen system. As per my opinion, vibrating screen system is much better because uh, uh, with this system, you can collect more particulars and also with a different size. And also, as per the new technology uh, today, we can find also different options that can be used with the normal beach cleaning machine. For example, normally when we are thinking about beach cleaning, we are thinking about one machine that can filter the sand no? and collect uh, the stone, uh, shell and everything. But uh, now, for example, in the market, there are some machines that can be used, uh, for example, with like a pitchfork for uh, to use like a pallet lifting 
or for example uh, you can add an optional that is the bucket uh, that you can easily move the sand for example if you want to change the landscape of your beach uh, you can do with uh, this optional or another optional very very important is uh, the rake uh, to collect the seaweeds uh, normally a lot of hotels have this problem no because uh, um, maybe from the uh, from the sea arrive the seaweed and if you need to collect uh, manually it will take a lot of time but if in the machine you can add uh, this uh, rake in the front or in the back, uh, it's not a big issue. You can collect the seaweed with the machine, it would be more and more easy. And another, another option that uh, you can, we can find in the market, for example, is the arrow reaper that can be used to soften the hard sand, uh, especially when the sand are very, very, very hard. Uh, and uh, maybe when you are walking, no, uh, you mm -hmm. can feel that. By using this uh, this uh, arrow repair, you can uh, uh, completely change the the feeling when you are walking in the sand. And of course, uh, especially today, due due for uh, the pandemic situation, due COVID nineteen, uh, uh, we have also chance to to add in uh, in some machine an hydro cleaner that uh, can be added in the front of the machine. It's like a tank where we can add uh, some uh, chemical, specific chemical to sanitize the sand also. Not only the sand, but also the uh, the sun bed, the leisure equipment. In my opinion, today, after a lot of years, there are a, a lot of uh, technology that uh, we can find in the market. Okay, uh, we have a question uh, from a uh, Miss Mia. So she's she's asking about whether electrical machines. Uh, do we have electrical machines as well as sand cleaning machines uh, that also reduce noise? No, honestly speaking, electrical machine, of course, uh, we need to take, there are two different electrical machines. One, one is by cable. Of course, by yeah. cable, it's impossible <laughs> because you cannot, you cannot drive with the cable inside in the beach. And right. by battery, uh, by battery, um, some company try to do some uh, machine uh, working by battery. The problem is that, uh, you know, one beach cleaning machine is working in the sand and required a lot of power. The autonomy mm. for the battery will be not enough to, to run uh, for a long time the, 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 the machine. Uh, as, uh, for example, Mr. Einel said before, uh, normally the operation about beach cleaning uh, in the resort they are doing early morning or in the evening. There are maybe mm. some solutions. For example, in uh, our machine we can put also the light, the light system, and you can uh, you can work also uh, at not night. during the night. But when when the light is not there, you can uh, you can uh, work. And of course, what we are trying every time to improve also is the silencer of the machine because we know that the the noises can be a, a problem. But uh, by battery or electrical uh, would be very very different. I saw one machine in the market that was working by uh, the solar panel. Okay, but uh, oh. was not a good uh, good result because um, as I told you before, when you are when you are working. Also for us, no. When we are working inside in the sand, you know that is hard, no. Okay, and you need more power. Till today, till today, there is no no other uh, option instead of uh, engine uh, by petrol or diesel. Okay. So, um, what about uh, Mr. Ranjit, Mr. Ainul? What kind of technologies are you are you all seeing in the market? Uh, what kind of technologies are you all currently using as well, and how effective are they? See, uh, I am no machine expert as Alberto, but uh, with what we use here is that we use a raking technology, which is mm -hmm. a rake, a beach raking machine, uh, and uh, the other, other 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 one which is available in our sister hotel is the combined raking machine and raking and sifting technology. There are two ways to look at it when it comes to the mechanical process. I am not talking about the specific machine. I am just talking about the process. One is raking, another one is uh, swifting for me, an ideal machine would be a combine of raking and sifting technology. It is of, of course manually operated and reduce the human efforts by eighty percent. Okay. Yes. I'm also aware that there are robotic machines are available, which is we just need to switch it on and the guy goes and come back if, if your uh, beast permits you to use it. But those, uh, how expensive it is, I don't know. Okay, Mr. Anun. 
any comments? Uh, you know, one important aspect of, of the beach cleaning machine, I, I guess in hotels, is you will see in a lot of resorts, you will have beach umbrellas, which are very strategically placed. And for you to remove the umbrellas is, is a tedious task. It's not so easy. Uh, <clears throat> you know, a machine, uh, the drill which makes it easy to manage the beach umbrellas placement is something uh, we use here, Tapiro. It, it's excellent in that manner. I mean, you have to, apart from the functionality, you have to also consider different factors. One of those factors is that, you know, uh, it also has an arm excavator, which is an added functionality to make small excavations. Mm -hmm. um uh, because if required any place um, mm. and, and the best part for the machine is that you know you can always uh, add parts to it so it gives you that option that you know at at any moment you know you can have a compact shower you can have a hydro cleaner embedded in the machine then the the drill which i spoke about uh, before um, the, the best part is uh, it's also operating by by truck mechanism, not on wheels. So it's easy it. to go from one place to the other place. So these are some of the factors which are very key when you are using a, a particular machine, you have to keep into consideration. Uh, how does it help you? You know, you need to have, again, a, a rake, which is both in front and back to collect the seaweeds, which is important. So in, in case the, the front part misses it, the back can pick it up. So um, those a few key elements which you are looking for actually in the machine. Okay, okay, um, uh, Mr. Uh, okay, so, sorry. Um, so we've talked about the technologies. Uh, let's also talk about uh, the kind of training that is involved in uh, beach cleaning. Uh, Mr. Anil, since you just spoke about the the product, also tell us about the kind of training that you give your personnel um, in terms of maintaining the beaches. Uh, for us, the trainings are very simple and straightforward. Uh, with the machine, uh, it is actually handled by our team members only. And uh, we are very uh, thankful that we always, in terms of a new trainings being updated in the market on the machine, we always have a tie up and it's, it's always very prompt and on time that we get. Apart from that, it is very, very straightforward uh, trainings when we talk about the machines. Um, that we are getting apart from that a little bit complex trainings as mr ranjit uh, had already briefed us before was if there are certain types of marine uh, waste has to be strategically handled with the authorities if it is industrial waste has to be again strategically uh, informed let's say to the tourism ministry uh, for them to aware, be aware of it as we said again it comes back to the social media question you know before someone picks a photo sends it across at least you are doing your own paperwork so, so there are steps by steps one is with the machine second is how do you handle it the third part of that is the paperwork as to what all are the key considerations that you have to do paperwork stamping signatures communication across to the right authorities so these are very very critical and what we do is we always train people in batches for example yeah. it's it's not only the number one or the number two that that has to be aware of that practices but mostly also the senior supervisors the supervisors uh, because you never know you know someone is vacation the other person is off and because when a situation happens it doesn't see our routine as such so these yeah. are very very few key um, uh, criteria that we are doing Apart from that, on, on a very ground level, uh, you know, there are a few basic mechanisms that we all have to follow is, of course, you know, you don't have to go barefoot um, on the sand. Uh, again, having your specialized gloves, uh, which is not easily terrible uh, when you're handling the waste by hand or, or by foot. So just very normal trainings. How has this changed uh, in the current pandemic, especially with hotels gradually opening up uh given that UAE has opened up slowly. Um, how is this changing uh, when it comes to talking about things like social distancing or in terms of, uh, you know, protective equipment that uh, the staff needs to use? Well, I think, again, with social media's help, it is quite evident. And most of the travelers or or the, the people who take care of that job on a daily basis are aware of it. They understand. And again, uh, for us as working in hotels, there are certain guidelines from the tourism industry, um, be it at the beach or at the pool, that what are the criteria and the guidelines you have to uh, take care in terms of social distancing between sunbeds, 
or uh, between one person to the other person um, or for the lifeguards for that matter uh, to be ready to handle um, in giving them the amenity so for example in key areas like let's say one of the areas is the beach you know at any given point of time you need to have the face masks and the gloves now uh, we are also being uh, being trained to let the guests know and understand their importance also you know because let's say one out of one out of 100 guests would not be very comfortable say you know i've, I've come to a beach to relax i don't want to actually follow the guidelines so for you it becomes a little bit challenging and difficult to also follow that and to go up to them and make them understand that sir it's it's equally important for you as well as for all the uh, people around so but these are uh, the world evidently changing on a daily basis we are also acclimatizing to it slowly and slowly but the basic processes are always there uh, because one one good thing uh, for us as hotels is all our tourism ministries are doing an inspection on a regular basis and the inspection is happening on on um, uh, on the same day let's say you know just walk uh, walk in or else they would be booking under a, uh, the inspector would be booking under a dummy name as a guest to stay back yeah. and see if yeah. you all are following the processes or not and mm -hmm. uh, the fines are imposingly heavy so i think all the organizations are actually are taking hello um Chinon? Can uh, Albert, Mr. Alberto and uh, Mr. Denjit, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I think Mr. Ainul has uh, gone off. Uh, but anyway, I was anyway coming to this question uh, with you, Mr. Denjit. So tell us about the kind of training involved and also a little about how it has changed with the COVID situation. It's See, I would start with the COVID situation because the cleaning industry or the cleaning methods in the hotel has changed 360 degrees since the pandemic mm. has started. It has highlighted yeah. the importance of before it was only clean. Now we speak about sanitization. Now we speak about disinfection. And we have uh, we have to start uh, you know completely different. And we have to accept the fact that we don't know. And what we are doing is the 100% correct method. That is also not known. Uh, Challenges when you I will when you stand in the beach and observe the guests and our team members how they are adapting to it. Okay, as I will mention, the safe distancing is in place. We have the beach umbrellas and the safes. Different zones are as the different zones are allocated for the families, for the singles, for the couples, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. uh, simple example that before entering access into the beach, we need to do the thermal scanning of every guest. Mm -hmm. What happens at the, the 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 it is actually I don't know if it is funny or it's weird. What happens is the guests when they come in, uh, mm. or it be me who was walking into the beach, the mm. guy puts the thermal scanner into my forehead uh, is to sense it. My temperature is forty degrees already because I am walking. Yeah, yeah. From the air conditioned atmosphere to the beach, and how do I assess it? Mm. We don't know, and hopefully. It would we would we would know that in the coming weeks how can we you know understand so we have to let the guests enter considering the you know when they when the guests walk in through the, the to the hotel or walk in through the our recreation entrance there is there is also thermal screening was there so based on that figure we have to let them enter this is uh, then after every guest usage we need to sanitize. So thermal is not possible, so it has to be chemical. It has to be 70% alcohol solution has to be applied to all guest touch surface, let be it a, be it a pool bed, be it a, the, the table. And mm -hmm. moreover, the challenge what we face at the moment is that no more. Based on the latest regulation, we are not supposed to provide. We must not provide beach towels. Mm -hmm. Guests have to bring their own. Oh. In case if you have in we, the guest hotel guest, we can solve that problem by providing the uh, you know sanitized cleanly cleanly sealed towels in the room, saying that this is your dedicated towel for the beach. Please bring it. So yeah. those sort of education has to be provided to the guest. Uh, it's it's changed completely, drastically, and it is changing on a daily basis. And our guests are much more sensitive about when it comes to the cleanliness aspect. And we do not okay. want to be perceived as a hotel which is not taking care of the cleanliness, then we won't be in the business. It's 
Yeah, true. It's not about the brand. It's not about uh, how luxurious chandelier you have or how expensive marble you have. It's about the safety and the cleanliness. It's it's just, every day is changing. Yeah. Absolutely, it has completely changed. I mean, uh, if I would have to go to a hotel, I would definitely now think more about how clean it is, how much I am at risk of contamination if you know the hotel hasn't been maintained properly, and also about you know whether it is worth going to a hotel right now, you know, in this current situation. And uh, that is why now for y'all, it is more about disinfection and more about the cleanliness and hygiene of the hotel than really about the major experience or the luxurious aspect of it. I completely agree. Uh, Mr. Alberto, um, can you tell us a little about the kind of training that you give your clients uh, when it comes to uh, using the machines, uh, whether it yes. is the walk behind or the ride on? Yes, of course. Normally, this is uh, more important the training instead of the sales, in my opinion, because uh, of course, uh, uh, when uh, when we are uh, deliver the machine, especially we are providing the guidelines how to use the machine in a proper and better way. Of mm -hmm. course, uh, also to to maintain the longevity of the of the machine, no? and uh, also do for the reason because our machine has is a multifunction machine. Uh, we have a different optional that you can use, but uh, every time if you are not explained to the customer how to use all the optional, of course, uh, maybe they buy very good optional good machine, but uh, they need uh, of course uh, to receive the training by us. A part of the training also is very, very important, the maintenance in terms of service, of course, because uh, uh, without service, uh, especially you need to consider that uh, one beach cleaning machine is working in, uh, in the sand and, of course, uh, is working in very, very hard condition. There is dust, uh, sand. Of course, you need to be very, very, you need to take care uh, in the proper way to maintain the, the, the machine. This is a part okay. of our work, of course. Okay. What uh, uh, is there anything different that you're training people in now when it comes to the current pandemic situation? Sorry, I don't understand. Uh, when it comes to the COVID-19 situation, uh, are you adding any kind of extra training? Uh, especially, you, you were talking about using a disinfectant in your machine. No, yes. So uh, what what, uh, what we, we are providing now also, um, we are receiving also a lot of requests uh, for quotation because, uh, in uh, for example, in our machine, we have a special attachment that uh, can be fixed in the front of the machine. It can be used uh, to with uh, some nozzle, can be used to disinfect directly the Sand. And also with one lens, uh, you can also clean directly the, the sun bed, for example. Of course, uh, uh, it's not working only by water. We have a special uh, special product that uh, is a natural product that but uh, can uh, can be disinfected all the, the surface where the guests maybe are, are touching, you know, like the sun bed, uh, like the sand. Mm. Of mm. course, we are focusing in this uh, in this uh, in this uh, workers. Okay. Okay, so um, I just wanted to ask the attendees, the audience who are listening in today, uh, if you have any questions, this is the time because I'm just going to go ahead with the last uh, question for the webinar. So any questions, you all can just put it up on the chat. Um, in the meanwhile, my last question to all you gentlemen is, uh, what are the kind of challenges that you all are experiencing in beach cleaning right now? Any of you can start. Okay, I will start. <laughs> yes. uh, as uh, per my opinion, today, uh, after uh, we experience of uh, COVID-19, there are, uh, this is for, for my work, of course, I'm speaking no, yeah, about the for machine, but uh, there are uh, two challenge key points uh, to be considered, especially. The first one is uh, that, uh, for the customer to buy one machine where uh, on just one operator okay, can, uh, can do all the required work in the beach uh, from cleaning to sanitize. The second one, of course, uh, uh, one operator, but also one machine, one machine that uh, can do the same work uh, uh, from the cleaning to sanitize, okay, uh, because uh, using 
by all the options that we can add, for example. This is my opinion. Uh, uh, the, the key, uh, the, the main key to in this period uh, are these two, my opinion. Okay. Uh, Mr. Ranjit? See, the main challenge what we faced here during this pandemic is that we have closed the beach for almost three months and we have left it unattended because uh, we send the people on uh, leave. Uh, we have, uh, because we are all, we were all learning that how to stay safe and uh, during this pandemic. Then Absolutely. we, as a lot of cleaning needs to be done, a lot, lot of resettings has to be done in that aspect. Then training, uh, then all hotels are losing weight and they are learning to be lean and, you know, lean and mean, I would say that. So the person has to do one, two and three. And today we has to, we have to, we need to ask him to do four, five and six. Uh, lifeguards there to uh, attend the guest. And we say that, listen, don't stay there to attend the guest. You please go ahead and do, uh, to go ahead and clean the table as well as the beach, please, before you start over at the, at the, at the end of the ships. This was yeah. structuring and reorganizing ourselves to overcome this pandemic was one of the challenge. And there are so many steps which we have, we never used to do this before because we used to wrap this beach bed with a lot of towels, like two towels. And when the guests, guests, are come, the guests were coming and they used to give them a fresh set of towels. So the guest safety yeah. and was assured by that. By taking away this, we have to basically clean this beach beds after every guest use. Yeah. Uh, and reduce capacity for the guest also will attract, uh, you know, guest complaints. If uh, and we have to tell the guest, listen, you can be here for maximum of three hours. As a as a hotelier, I don't, I don't agree. <laughs> this, but yeah. Yeah, that's, this is what it is. And then it's coming back to the beach cleaning. Uh, yes, this is less people, more work, more stages. But that's what we need to do. Uh, then uh, when this come to re the main challenge, what I am facing, even I'm leaving the pandemic aside, the water is shallow and we have so many uh, debris coming from through the site, uh, through through the tides and which is, which will be a three, four, five, six meters, yeah. three, three four meters, uh, you know, away from the shore. So it won't be practically possible for us to I'm just talking about an operate from the operas, operational perspective during the beach operating hours to go and pick up whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Or put the safety in net, but that will prevent the sea life, the marine life entering to our shores. That is also not, you know, practical in that aspect. Uh, this, this is, and uh, yeah, this is what we face. New challenge. New challenge. Uh, Mr. Ainun? Um Actually, Mr. Ranjit very interestingly pointed out the the net point hmm. which is which is worth consideration because you know we are in a dilemma actually what what we should do or uh, but i would like to mention two points um, the first mm -hmm. point in general would be the challenges derives in many factors for support it can be starting from an individual action to any small or big organizations with the support of the government so i i strongly believe it must be support first by the guest commitment uh, at least from their side um, mm -hmm. And it has to start at a very grassroots level, um, and, mm -hmm. and it has to be start on a level which I'm talking about is education in school. You know, probably uh, if I remember my schooling when we were taught about environmental science, we were not taught about uh, uh, about the pollution as 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 a particular subject. You know, which needs to be actually taken up at grassroots levels now for people to understand what exactly is a marine pollution, because mm -hmm. even now a lot of adults would not be able to actually tell you. Yes, we are hoteliers. We we live it every day we would tell you but outside if you see if you understand the guests probably they will not uh, the second point which i want to uh, highlight mainly for the covid 19 situation is that i have been um, a volunteer for a lot of uh, uh, charitable organizations which do a lot of beach cleanup activity actually all around the middle east uh, to get volunteers now at this moment of time is also very challenging and it makes a lot of difference when we talk about a public beach. Now, basically, uh, we would have invitations every alternate weeks um, for volunteers and we would get huge numbers from organizations from different uh, different parts. But now 
and we all understand in terms of social distancing and that stress factor in our heads or a little bit of a doubt of you know mingling people is not supporting the the social and the noble cause so i correct i think these are the two very key challenges which which i feel uh, should be addressed and highlighted great i uh, completely agree with you especially with the part of you know where you're talking about actually educating children from the school level uh, about the pollution that um, you know that does happen even in the sea and even on the beaches i mean i still i still remember you know we spoke about air pollution land pollution noise pollution but not specifically about marine life uh, or sea pollution and um that we we just had a question from one of our audience who was talking about uh, you know how about educating people in general uh, where she goes to the public beach with her children and spends most of her time you know taking plastic out of the water and putting it into the trash bin but i think that completely goes down to the very very basic level of every single person knowing their social responsibility uh, when it comes to not only maintaining beaches but also come any any kind of public place that they are in and um, you know if we start that from grassroots level i mean you guys as hoteliers are doing it at uh, the level that you all are at uh, you know anyone who comes to a luxurious hotel or any hotel for that matter that has a beach you are going to be talking about how they need to keep their beaches clean how to how they need to put things in the trash and not you know lying around anywhere and things like that yes mr ranji please i just want to thank this person who has given this uh, comment because it's very relevant for us because we have a, we are living away from the city and we can actually organize such kind of a awareness campaign Just give me give me an idea uh, mm -hmm. of a campaign between with, within we can approach a school uh, you know invite about 25 kids how the beaches are maintained and how what is the importance of this a kind of a familiarization and i just want to thank the person that's, that's a great me. idea yeah it is it's it is mia. because this just part the idea for me thank you thank you mia for this question and for the idea for mr ranjit um yeah so she's also saying thank you to you as well so um yes on that note unless uh, you gentlemen have anything else to add do you all have anything else that you would like to add uh, to our discussion no. i Great. just want to so, thank you Thank you so much. Thanks Thank to you. all of you, uh, Mr. Alberto, Mr. Ranjit, Mr. Ainul, uh, for being such lovely participants uh, on our panel of experts for this webinar. Uh, thank you, Mr. Alberto and Fiorentini Middle East for sponsoring the webinar. I think the topic was very, very interesting, and I think our discussion has brought about, uh, you know, a lot more uh, food for thought. And yes. I hope that you know, uh, as part of our attendees and as all of us who are presenting today. uh i think uh, it has given us a lot more uh, awareness about beach cleaning and how we need to really maintain it from a personal as well as a professional level so on that uh, on that note thank you so much i'm we're going to sign off now for anybody who has missed out on uh, the first half of the presentation of the webinar we will be putting putting up the recording uh, of this webinar on our social medias uh, and possibly sending it to you on email as well so please look out for it uh, if nothing else you can just visit cleanmiddleeast.ae and you will find it in our knowledge center yeah thank you so much everybody it was a great pleasure and have thank a good day thank, thank you have a great day bye everyone bye bye bye, bye. bye, -bye.